Hi, welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Jill Duffy here with Alex Cologne today. The top headline in tech is that some of the newest cars on the market are entirely hackable. Yeah, uh, two security researchers, they just published a paper on car hacking and they gave a talk about it. And the 2014 Infiniti Q50 was determined to be the most hackable of the cars that they tested. Um, now, the reason for that is because the car's navigation, Bluetooth, radio, they all function on the same network. So if right. you hack into that one network, you could hack into everything. But that's also controlling the brakes and the steering yes. and some other problems. And that is the scary part. Exactly. So if you have everything on the same network, that makes everything vulnerable through one place, and that is not good. Uh, they also found, though, that the 2014 Audi A8 is the least hackable car. And the reason, as you might expect, is because all of the smart systems in the car are on separate networks. Those networks are all protected and independent, so it's much more difficult to get into any one of them. And so basically, though, if you don't want a hackable car, um, you could just buy a dumb car. You don't right. need to have all these network connections. I wonder how that's going to be affected, though, as we start seeing more connectivity with the phone, right? So you think you're relying on your phone, but as soon as that phone is Bluetoothing into a system, right. What are, you, what are you leaving yourself open to? In other security news, Black Hat is happening this week. Black Hat is one of the biggest security conferences taking place in Las Vegas. We have complete coverage of this show on PCMag.com forward slash Black Hat. But one of the top stories we heard yesterday is that researchers are finding they can videotape people typing their passwords on their phone and get them pretty accurate. Yeah, and um, the crazy thing is now, like you, with Google Glass or even a smartwatch, you could have video cameras everywhere. Right, um, this doesn't really require a very high-tech video camera. Right, and I think they said with, with those cameras, they were able to determine just from, from up to nine feet away, they could watch people input their password, and through a bunch of like visual cues like light on their fingers and shadows, the way that they were typing on their keyboards, they were 90% accurate in determining passwords. Yeah, this was, I mean, they automated it too. So it wasn't like they were studying the videos with their eyes. They had an algorithm that was processing the footage that they captured, but they could very quickly find those passwords. Uh, so that's a little bit concerning, I think. Yeah. Some other neat news that has to do with video is that some researchers at MIT have been able to take high video, high speed video of objects and extract what audio was playing around them based on the vibrations. This is pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, the video is super neat. You should watch it. But um, basically, when sound hits an object, it causes the object to vibrate, and they can extract the audio cues from that vibration. It's really, really interesting to watch. Right, so what they did was they put some objects um, in a soundproof room, had a video camera on them, and then they were playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. Uh, and then in the video, you can actually see this and hear it. They extract from these vibrations, they used a potato chip bag, they used a plant, um, some other things, so that they could recreate based on these tiny, tiny movements what audio was happening in the room. Then they also showed that it was possible to do it on some level with consumer grade cameras. So the first time they got it, they were doing it with really high definition, high speed cameras. And then they showed that it was possible to extract some sounds. So this has some implications too about security cameras, I would think, you know. Oh, right, yeah, because if you, you could just kind of like point the camera at something and then maybe get the audio that's happening in the room without right. needing to be in the room. And I think there are some laws about security cameras and the fact that you can't have audio on them in certain places. These are for privacy reasons. But now if you can have a pretty decent camera, nothing too expensive, and still be able to extract what people are saying or the noises in the room, this could, be, this could have some serious implications. Yeah. Uh, let's take a reader question. Alex, what do we have today? Um, yeah, so Richard, he's the CEO of Beyond Disability, asked via email, are there any fitness trackers that include pain management features? Yeah, so there were none that I, do you know of any? There was none that I could think Not of. Not off the top of my head. Right, so I was looking into this a little bit and I found one of the easiest solutions for tracking your pain would be to use another feature and just co-opt it for that. So Fitbit is one of the most popular fitness tracker lines uh, and it has a feature in the web version and probably in the mobile version too that allows you to track your allergies. So you rate on a scale of one to five how bad your allergies were today, and then there's, a, there's like a text field entry where you can add additional notes. 
Uh, so I thought that was probably a pretty easy way to just use that for your pain management. Um, there are some other tools though. I mean, there's lots of independent apps for pain management and I'm gonna guess that some of those will sync into Microsoft Health Vault. That's another solution that's free to use where you can bring lots of data in from a whole bunch of different health and fitness activity trackers and monitors um, and kind of correlate it all together. So that's my best solution right now, Richard. If you have other ideas for tracking your pain management We'd love to hear them. You can send us those comments in the YouTube comments. You can also tweet at us. I'm Jill E. Duffy. Alex, how do you like to be reached? Um, you can tweet at me, Alexander G. Cologne. Now let's take a look at one cool thing. Today's one cool thing, Alex, is something that you've tested. So let's take a look. Yeah, so it is still summer. It is still grilling season. So we are testing, well, we just tested the Quirky Refuel. Um, basically, this is a connected propane gauge. Um, the part that Jill is holding, it sits underneath your propane tank, and it's sort of a connected scale. It measures how much um, weight is left in the tank, and then this sensor, which is magnetic, it goes on the side of your, uh, the side of, um, your grill, it transmits that information to your phone. So it'll tell you, for instance, when you're running low, you have a quarter tank left, you'll get a notification that it's time to get more propane. And you tested this out in a, uh, a nice, beautiful home with a nice backyard. Right, and right, so I couldn't, I, you know, we live in apartments in New York, so I couldn't do it here. I went to my parents' house in Long Island, um, had a great weekend testing this. Um, and it, it's cool. Uh, the one, a couple of issues with it is that it requires Wi-Fi, so you need to have a grill that's close enough to your home network. Um, also, like the, so far, that's the only feature it has to tell you how much propane is left, but the measurements aren't that exact. It's you know, by the quarter of a tank. So you know, you know, with a quarter of a tank, you might still, you could definitely do some more. Yeah, cooking. I feel like you could probably guess up to you know, a quarter tank just by lifting your tank right, too right. and guessing it. And I was saying that the old school way to do this is you take a cup of hot water, you pour it on the outside of your tank. Wherever the propane is, it will cool that water really quickly so you can just run your hand down the side when it starts to feel cool. That's the level of your propane. So how much does this cost? So it's $50 directly from Quirky. If you get it at Home Depot, it's 30. Obviously, if you're going to do it, get the $30 one. And your review's up now? Yeah, I gave it three stars. You can read it now. So check out Alex's review. It's on PCMag.com now. That's it for our show for today. We'll see you next time.